Hello everyone and welcome back. I am the Sovereign and this is my court and that is laundry happening in the next room. So if you hear anything, it's just, I'm gonna try to eliminate it, but just so you know, like, yeah, over here living life. So I just watched the announcements, introductions of the crop of women competing for the crown of Miss Universe Philippines this year. And it was very interesting. And do I have a list? Of course I have a list. In fact, I have a full reaction that hopefully I get to put up. I didn't intend on making a reaction, but the video became a reaction. So, hey, who's complaining, right? I do have my list. And before we even get into that, this press presentation is our first look into the contenders vying for the crown this year. And it seems like the women were able to choose any outfit, any styling that they wish to really show themselves off. I know it's the first time that we are seeing them. However, from the perspective of a competitor, it is very important, obviously, to make a good first impression. If you're going to a job interview, which Miss Universe Philippines is a job, as is Miss Universe, you want your first impression to be a good one. It is a good idea to do your best to try to garner support from the fan base as much as possible, especially even into the first steps. One thing a Miss Universe never is, is boring, okay? So I know a lot of women may be thinking, even the fans may be thinking, oh, they're being subtle, they're being subdued. And I always ask why. Why would we do that? You should be stunning morning, noon, and night every day, every press presentation, every challenge that you're in. If you're trying to be a Miss Universe, a Miss Universe is never subtle. A Miss Universe captivates attention no matter what room she walks into. Your first impression is a very important time because it gets the fans talking about you. It gets people noticing you. Even if you don't win, you garner a fan base off of your impressions. And having that push, remember there's, there's times in competition where fans are voting for women, women to win certain awards or be pushed further into competition because usually they do sort of eliminations throughout the expanse of Miss Universe Philippines. So it's important to garner support from the fan base as early as possible and be consistent in your presentation and your skill level. If anything, you want to consistently improve. Now, a lot of people strategize that maybe if I start a little bit lower and then build, it will get me support. But if anything, it's gonna get you overlooked or it's get people like me who are super fans who are gonna look at you and be like, she's really inconsistent with her her performance ability. Um, you wanna be good no matter what. You want people raving about you. You wanna be in a top five list every single time. You can drop off at any point. You can falter at any point. Something can happen. But those consistent women never let me down. Those are the women that usually do well in competition overall. And you wanna be one of those. So first look, first impression is important. Why do people always wanna message me when I'm on camera? Are you like watching me? Do you do you know as soon as I hit the button that I'm in front of an audience? You do that on purpose? Like I'm not gonna stop. So I have a list of 13 right now. And that is just the general list of women that made a positive impression upon me of, oh, she has a lot of potential to win this competition. So I think there are 40, women, if I'm not mistaken, that I viewed in this presentation. Of the 40 right now, only 13 I looked at and was like, wow, she could win. Now that's not to say that this is bad or everybody was awful. Um, on average, this is a very good batch of competitors. No one really has a terrible walk. I think there was maybe one or two girls I notated that they needed to really work on the walk. But overall, everybody seems like they have had some sort of preparation to step on the stage. When everybody is at least very decent, that raises the bar a bit. Had there been like, you know, tragic walks and like terrible, you know, outfits here and there, then my standards wouldn't be as high. But for Miss Universe Philippines, because everybody kind of has a good awareness of what expectations are of them, it makes the bar a little bit higher. Um, so nobody in here, I think was super awful. I think there was a couple girls where I'm like, oh, you need to work on the walk. You need to work on outfits. We need to do better with that. But for the most part, everyone, the average woman was decent, but there were 13 that was pretty darn good. And then of that 13, I narrowed it down even further. There were seven that I was like, oh, you're actually dangerous. There are seven women that I was kind of taken aback and I was like, oh, future Miss Universe Philippines, maybe I'm gonna watch you. Like I have, those were my seven faves. Usually I try to do like, you know, the 10, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna force my list to be 10. There wasn't 10 favorites, there were seven. And I wanna talk about those seven because they earned their spots and I only talk about women who work for it and earn it. 
The first woman that earned special notation from me is Miss Universe Philippines Australia. Look at you cheaters taking Filipinas from other cities and whatnot. I'm not mad at you though. They're all Filipina, I get it. You know, and Philippines, the Filipinas are all over the world. So I get why we have like Florida, Miami, Australia, Southern California, cause y'all are just trying to take over the world but you call them all back when it's time for Miss Universe Philippines. How convenient, either way. Miss Universe Philippines, Australia had me flamboozled, just flamuxed, just like stunned completely. Number one, that girl is gorgeous. Like she is stunning, you guys. Like the hair was perfectly coiffed. The smile was magnificent. It was vibrant. It was bright. It was huge. It was natural. She looked like she was not nervous. She looked like she was excited to be there. This is an experienced competitor. I'm gonna bet my left foot on that. This girl has to have competed before because her movements were fluid. Her toes were tucked, like j j just perfection. Perfect press presentation. Miss Universe Philippines, Australia. I have not a single complaint and nothing but praise for this woman. I, the first women that were like coming out of the gate for Miss Universe Philippines had me gasping for air because I was panicked. I was a fish out of water. I'm like, the first five women, six women were very, very good. And I'm like, oh my God, the standards this year are so high. They like, had me gasping, gulping for breath. Miss Universe Philippines, I, like Australia, baby. Top 10, baby, you're fighting for the crown. Baby, they cannot stop you if they wanted to. I, one of my favorites, like style, the hair, the smile, the walk, the nothing but praise from me, baby. Perfect. The next woman I wanna talk about, by the way, this is in no particular order because these seven are just the magnificent seven. Like you guys are just celestial beings, okay? Just enigmas. So the next woman I wanna talk about is Bacalod City, <sighs> enchanting. And she, like stunning, beautiful, just, oh my God. I saw her with her dark hair, smooth movements. She has a little bit of sass about her. She's got a little bit of spice. She is built and ready for competition. I cannot wait to see the, all of the seven. I can't wait to see what they turn into because if you're at this level right now, and this is your introduction, and we have like months into competition we need to get to, I, I cannot imagine what, like, how are you not already a butterfly? If she becomes any more than what she is, she's gonna become a Miss Universe. Bacalod, like, she is just calm, collected, smooth, gorgeous. She did this little hair flick at the end of her performance, like, babe, sass, the sauce, the spice. I don't even eat spicy food, but I ate your entire dish. She served me beautifully. I just, ah, oh, what a Filipina. Like, yes. The, the competition between these seven women, you're gonna have me just like choking on chips. I love it. Baka Or City is a woman that I am familiar with because she was formerly known as Miss Cavite and she placed very, very well. So obviously I know I have high expectations for her. Now I'm not just gonna place her on like this top seven magnificent seven list just because I'm familiar with her. No, she definitely did earn her place, but as she would, she's experienced. She knows how to walk smoothly, how to be calm, how to give us a fabulous smile. I do remember her criticisms very well. Her presence can sometimes dim to the point where she's not as commanding as other women. Sometimes she can come off maybe too subtle or maybe like everybody's favorite high school teacher, maybe like she's always very mature and articulate, but she doesn't always give that ferocity and that commanding energy that you would expect from a Miss Universe Philippines, especially one that's going to have to go to international competition and vie for that crown. We need a woman who steps on stage and is kind of intimidating. Like she's kind of awe inspiring. And yet at the same time, it's almost like you don't wanna to get too close to her because that fire is just too, too hot. She does not always have the hottest flame, the best heat. So hopefully coming into this competition, she can give a little bit more spice, you know? I do need to be a little bit more timid of her. Um, back in the other days, I wanted to have a conversation with her. I wanted to give her hugs, but I wasn't necessarily intimidated by her. I wasn't necessarily like, oh my God, God, that's a queen. Though she is a very respectable woman and I'm hoping she gives off a little bit more commanding energy this time around. 
Next on the list of the Magnificent Seven is Cagayan del Oro. She also gives me the aura of an experienced competitor. I mean, the movements were smooth. The facial transitions were fabulous. It was very intricate. It was just awe-inspiring. I liked looking at her face. The makeup was glossy. Like some of these girls' makeup was just stunning. You, you look fresh-faced and yet made up at the same time. Like you were giving glass skin and rosy cheeks and fierce eyes and I, whoever's doing the makeup on some of these women, like, yes, like it's a, it's a serve. Everything about her was giving mature, experienced, well-seasoned veteran. So I'm assuming you guys are gonna tell me in the comment section what competition she came from because there's no way this is her first time. Okay, the next woman, the next woman is special. Like if I had to pick like a top two, right? If I had to have a top two, it would be Australia, Miss, Miss Universe Philippines, obviously, Australia or this woman. This one, those two, these two women, oh, they make me so like excited. Like they make me so happy. Like fed my spirit, nursed my soul back to life type of feeling. Miss Universe Philippines Leite, I love you, girl. I love you. Oh my God, so much to feast. I watched her performance. I couldn't stop looking at her. I rewatched it again and again and again and again. Like I couldn't stop, mesmerized. Like everything about her, I loved. Her legs are a mile long. She had this tiny little yellow dress. It is a periwinkle, not periwinkle, I am tripping. It is a pastel, beautiful, like baby yellow with bows all over the place. She had a cute bow in her hair. She's giving cute in a way that like nobody else could. The girls were trying, okay? I did see the other ladies who are trying to give like class who were trying to give cute, but she didn't do it right. She gave cute in a way that was still like respectable. It was still kind of fierce. It was still kind of like enchanting. She did it right. Typically when women dress this way, like they're dressing sweet and demure, their performances are also very boring. But she came out in this very sweet, demure kind of outfit, which also is still kind of sexy because it is very, very short. And she gave a dimensional dynamic performance with her face. Like it was very sweet smiles and yet there was mischief behind her eyes. She was smizing and doing things with her eyes and her face that just had me stunned. I just wanted to stare at her. She walks and moves with such ease. There was not a hint of nervousness around her. It seemed like she was just on a stroll. She was just on a stroll that day and happened upon the Miss Universe Philippines stage just to say hello and greetings to all of you who were oh so lucky enough to bask in the glory and glow of her presence. And then she sauntered away to be seen another day. Like, I just wanted to see her again. I just like, are you going on a picnic and can I go and why are you leaving me here? Everything about her was just so calm. It was just so easy. And yet her skin was glowing and her face was fresh and her hair was bright. And I just wanna sit here and think about her because her, the, the thought of her makes me happy. She's gonna be such a good competitor. Please do not let me down because I am so enchanted by this competitor. Like I love her so much. If, I had, if I'm picking top two, it's uh, Australia and Leyete. Is that how you say it? I don't know, I love her. I love her. I just don't ever let her go. Like she makes finals immediately. Just off of this performance alone, she gets to make finals, period. <laughs> Next, I have another long-legged supermodel, I assume, Miss Tagig, who came out in this beautiful burgundy outfit and she was swinging those sleeves. As I say, if your outfit has some movement, use it. And Tagig came out with a fabulous walk. I mean, she also presented like a seasoned competitor, legs a mile long, like, oh my gosh, skin a glistening, hair perfect, like, Amazing. And her outfit wasn't the most stand out, but because her performance was so good, like that's what really made her memorable. The only thing that I'm gonna side note about Tagig is those two turns that she did on her way out kind of had me like, uh, they weren't the best, but her overall like ease of walk, facial composure and everything, I don't think that she's going to disappoint in this competition. So she's definitely going to be a heavy hitter. So I'm chucking those two little turns um, off to like just being a fluke because otherwise she seems like a veteran. Like she seems like she's had thorough practice. I, I really liked her. Obviously I put her on this list so she deserves to be there. I just, I have high hopes for what is to come. And last but not least on those dangerous seven is Miss Universe Philippines United Kingdom. What? <laughs> 
Her outfit is definitely very unique. Definitely not something that I would choose for myself. And usually it's something that generally I would overlook and yet it worked for her and it was unique. She used it as well. It was half up, like it was almost like that mullet gown, but in a situation where we're doing, you know, press presentation announcements, you have more wiggle room to have fun with your outfits. And she surely did choose something that stood out a little bit. Good on her, but the way she used it, she used a little bit of the movement. She has a very experienced poly walk, walks right down the runway and gives us beautiful face play and eye connection. I love the way that she uses her eyes. I feel like the facial expressions could be a little bit more natural, but also she's still giving me experienced competitors. So I think a lot of these women on the Fab 7 list, they have to be experienced. Like you're not going to tell me this is their first time competing. There's just no way. Um, but Miss United Kingdom, seasoned, veteran, has to be. Because there are no issues with her. Honestly, there's no issues with anyone on my Fab 7 list, which is exactly why they are the Fab 7. They were near perfection. They were so good that they were special. Like they weren't just good. They weren't only good. They were something captivating. They were something enchanting. These are women that I could see giving the crown to or who are crown ready right now. So obviously these are also the women that you need to sabotage immediately. <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies. I'm like, put a target on her back. But these are women that I don't see slipping. And if they did slip, I would cry. So of course they're not going to. Now, don't do that. Don't do that. You wouldn't do that to me. You wouldn't because because Filipinos are nice. So you're not going to regress. You're going to keep building and doing better and doing better because that's what we want. Yay, me. <laughs> so I will expand the Fab 7 list here on the screen just so you guys can see everybody that I had originally written down to take note of. And it's not to say that these women below the seven were bad in any way. They were written because they were great. The seven were just exceptional. They were near perfect. So that's why I made it a seven list instead of the 13. Because the 13, I still could see some flaws here and there, but they are still very, very good. But like I said, if I were to take everybody into account, there's like 40 women, only 13 really made a very good impression on me. So the rest of the women, obviously they're not being discounted or kicked out in any way, but there are things that need to be worked on as competition goes on. And obviously my favorites, you know, will change here and there as the women develop, but I expect the Fab Seven to maintain this level of performance and presentation throughout competition or even better but there will be no falling from anyone. Yes? Okay, great, fabulous. In the comment section below, let me know who were your favorites on your list? Like, who did you take note of? Who are the favorites in the Philippines? Because you guys know, I don't know. I am just a disconnected, detached American fangirl who knows nothing about what's going on in the Philippines. So teach me, you guys always do. I wonder like, who's, you know, the daughter of a former Miss Universe Philippines who moved abroad overseas and has come back for vengeance of her mother. Like, you guys always have fantastic backstories for these competitors. So I look forward to reading whatever notes you put down there for me to know. And of course, we're gonna critique my American accent and how I pronounce things. It's fine, it's fine. Stop picking cities that I don't know how to pronounce. Maybe we could do that. And then I won't be over here being silly on the internet all the time, but you guys love that, right? Okay. So leave your comments in the comments section below. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button so you can come back for further developments in competition. And remember, I love you and I will miss you, but you know I will be back in a future video. Bye.